feel that some English accents are harder to understand than others. Well, the truth is that most likely the accents that you find hardest to understand are the ones that you don't expose yourself to regularly. For example, if you're always watching American or British TV shows, those are the accents that you're going to have an easier time understanding. That's why today we'll take a closer look at three English accents that are less common in movies and TV series than typical American and British accents. Do keep in mind that each country and accent has many variations or dialects, and these are just a few. But first, each week we release lessons like this one to help English learners like you understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes and without needing subtitles. So make sure that you join our global community of over 6.5 million learners by hitting that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. The first accent we'll look at is the South African accent. Let's look at a scene from the film The Hustle, starring Rebel Wilson and Anne Hathaway. And here we are, Kathy, I want y'all to meet South Africa's most celebrated and discreet endangered species dealer, Imka Becker. Say, so what's wrong, Imka? Exotic cat got your tongue? <laughs> no. <laughs> How's it, Kathy? <laughs> it's such a pleasure to meet a fellow wildlife enthusiast. I love the Springbox myself. Oh, but Sheila lost her tongue, tragically, to a very small but ferocious red-crested wombat. God bless her soul. <laughs> Shame. She can sound, though, can't you, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> yes, she can. And here we are, Kathy, I want y'all to meet South Africa's most celebrated and discreet endangered species dealer, Imka Becker. If someone is discreet, they are usually careful in what they do or say because they want to avoid attracting too much attention. For example, the reporter was very discreet when they investigated the story. Say, what's wrong, Imka? Exotic cat got your tongue? <laughs> no. <laughs> how's it, Kathy? <laughs> so, how's it is a common greeting in South Africa, which can be used for both hello and how are you. Notice that when Rebel pronounces how's it, she says how's it. Let's practice together. How's it? How's it? How's it? How's it, Kathy? How's it, Kathy? So a key feature of some South African dialects is that diphthongs are turned into monothongs. What this means is that usually with diphthongs, when there are two vowels in a single syllable, we hear both sounds. For example, in the word lie, you can hear both the I and E vowel sound. Lie, lie. However, in some South African dialects, you might hear this change to a monothong, which is one vowel sound. So this might sound like la, la. We also hear this with the letter Y when she says myself. Instead, she says myself. I love the spring box myself. I love the spring box myself. It's such a pleasure to meet a fellow wildlife enthusiast. I love the spring box myself. The schwa is another noticeable feature of the South African accent. So instead of saying pleasure with a rolled tongue, you'll hear that she says pleasure. This is because most South Africans would say this word with a flat tongue or non-rotic R sound. Now let's practice this pronunciation feature with some other words. Remember to keep your jaw relaxed and your tongue flat. So while Americans might say mother, smaller, and water, South Africans would say mother, mother, small, la, smaller, water, water. 
Here's a nice example where Orlando Bloom uses the non-rotic R in the movie Zulu when he says the word car. I'm investigating a car accident. A four by four like yours was involved in a hit and run. <laughs> no. How's it, Cappy? It's such a pleasure to meet a fellow wildlife enthusiast. I love the springbok's muscle. You might know that a springbok is an animal quite similar to a deer. However, it's also South Africa's national animal. And in the context of the scene, when Rebel mentions the springboks, she's referring to the South African national rugby team, also called the springboks. <laughs> Shame. She can sound though, can't you, Sheila? Another significant feature of this accent is that the A vowel sound is usually pronounced with a low voice and quite far back in the mouth. So in many South African dialects, this would sound like ah, uh, ah. Uh. So while Americans might pronounce this word as can't, South Africans would say can't, can't. Some more examples of the sound would be bath becomes bath, last becomes lost, task becomes task. The AR combination or AH sound is also pronounced with a lower voice in some South African dialects. Listen to the word hard and pot in this clip from the movie Invictus. Afternoon, men. Good to see you all working so hard. I have a short announcement. As part of the PR build-up to the World Cup, you will be conducting coaching clinics in townships all over the country. An extra feature to point out about the South African accent is that many South Africans use the true T sound when pronouncing the letter T. So for example, as I mentioned earlier, instead of saying water, we would say water. Learning different accents is fun and a key part of being a fluent English speaker. But if you're unable to travel and can't think of ways to meet different people to practice English with, we have just what you need with our real life English app. This is the only place where anytime, anywhere, at the press of a button, you can instantly connect with other English learners from around the world. You can have fascinating conversations about your life, your passions, even your favorite movies and TV series. This will take you from feeling like a lost and insecure English learner to being a confident and natural English speaker. So download it right now by clicking up here or down in the description below or simply search for Real Life in your favorite app store. Next, we'll watch a clip from the time Chris Hemsworth reported the weather on Australia's Today Show and look at three pronunciation features of the Australian accent. Hot footed up to one of the horse studs and check out the beautiful, the beautiful. I heard you talking about looking for some horses. There's a bunch down here actually, which I've noticed in the paddock. What are you doing? Well, we're doing the weather for the Today Show, um, oh, cool. and I often get teased about not having the best presenting skills or pronunciation. You want to help me out? Yeah, let's uh, let's mispronounce all of these. <laughs> hot foot it up to one of the horse studs and check out the beautiful. <laughs> the to hot foot it is an expression which means to run or walk somewhere as quickly as possible. I heard you talking about looking for some horses. There's a bunch down here actually which I've noticed in the paddock. Notice how Chris pronounces the word noticed. Which I've noticed in the paddock. So the Australian accent often uses the flat T between vowels, which means that the T sound sounds like a D sound. Let's practice that together. Noticed. Noticed. Which I've noticed in the paddock. What are you doing? Well, we're doing the weather for the Today Show. We use the word paddock to mean a small field where animals, especially horses, are kept. Another very noticeable feature of the Australian accent is the upward inflection at the end of sentences. Notice that the reporter doesn't say weather with a rolled or rotic R sound. Well, we're doing the weather for the Today Show. 
while we're doing the weather for the Today Show. Instead, similar to the South African accent, many Australians don't pronounce the R sound at the end of words like weather is weather, weather. This means that the final sound in these words is a schwa or a sound. An exception to this would be if the following word after the ER sound is a vowel, then the R becomes a linking sound. So for example, if I were to say over and out, I could just say over and out, over and out. Um, okay. And I often get teased about not having the best presenting skills or pronunciation. In this example, it's quite subtle, but notice that instead of saying pronunciation, she says pronunciation, A. The A sound is elongated in this word. Not having the best presenting skills or pronunciation. Pronunciation. This is because in many Australian accents, one pronunciation feature that you can be sure to find is elongated vowels. What this means is that long vowel sounds are often drawn out even further. For example, with the long A vowel sound, you might hear this pronounced as A, A. Before we take a look at the final accent, let us know down in the comments, do you enjoy learning about different English accents? We look forward to hearing from you and who knows, your comment might just be the inspiration for our next lesson. Next, we'll look at the features of the Scottish accent. And what better TV series to demonstrate this accent than the very popular Outlander? <laughs> Don't be shy. Sit and join us. Thank you. You're the new lass, eh? A wee bit older than Madam usually takes on. She likes them no more than five and twenty. But I'm sure you'll do fine. What's your name, dearie? Claire. <laughs> Don't be shy. Sit and join us. A significant feature of this accent is that in negative sentences, the auxiliary verbs such as do, did and will merge with the word no and are pronounced as dine and winne. So as you can hear in the clip, instead of saying, don't be shy, she says, dinne be shy. How old are you? Oh, I'm 16. And dinne worry, I'm old enough to know what sort of a place this is. You're the new lass, eh? Something to remember is that the Scottish word lass is used to refer to a girl or young woman. Here's a nice example from the Pirates of the Caribbean where this word is used. If you spring me from this cell, I swear on pain of death, I shall take you to the Black Pearl and your bonny lass. A wee bit older than Madam usually takes on. She likes them no more than five and twenty. But I'm sure you'll do fine. In Scottish English, the word we means small or little. You might also notice that in some Scottish accents, the glottal T or stop T is used at the end of words, which means that the T sound is not released. For example, in the scene when she says bit, it sounds more like bit, bit. We bit older than Madam usually takes on. We bit older than Madam usually takes on. So let's practice the sound. So instead of closing your mouth slightly and releasing the air to make the t sound, relax your jaw and prevent the air from being released. So it sounds like bit, bit. You can hear this pronunciation feature again when she uses the word but. She pronounces it as but. She likes them no more than five and twenty, but I'm sure you'll do fine. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do fine. What's your name, dearie? Claire. Scottish English has a very particular musical rhythm. This happens because the stress of some syllables is placed differently depending on the words. For example, notice how the word deary is pronounced in the scene. What's your name, dearie? Here you can prominent characteristics of this accent, which is the really strong rhotic R sound. 
it's a while with the American R sound, the tongue rolls back, but it doesn't touch the top of the mouth. It's quite the opposite with the Scottish R. You'll notice that the tongue goes up and it's more to the front of the mouth. So it touches the top of the mouth as in r, r, r. Listen to how Ian says the word true in this example. They say as how when Uncle Jamie came home from Culloden without you, that maybe you've gone back to where you came from, back to the fairies. Is that true? Before we get to the quiz, I hope you enjoyed learning about these different English accents and that you not only feel confident listening to them, but perhaps even using these accents yourself. Now, let's get to the quiz. And here we are. Kathy, I want y'all to meet South Africa's most celebrated and discreet endangered species dealer, Imka Becker. Say, what's wrong, Imka? Exotic cat got your tongue? <laughs> no. <laughs> How's it, Kathy? How's it is a type of insult, joke, greeting. It's such a pleasure to meet a fellow wildlife enthusiast. I love the Springbox muscle. Oh, but Sheila lost her tongue, tragically, to a very small but ferocious red-crested wombat. God bless her soul. <laughs> Shame. She can sound though, can't you, Sheila? Yes. <laughs> yes, she can. Hot footed up to one of the horse studs and check out the beautiful, the beautiful. If someone hot foots, they run a walk quickly, are excited, move slowly. I heard you talking about looking for some horses. There's a bunch down here actually, which I've noticed in the paddock. What are you doing? Well, we're doing the weather for the Today Show, um, oh, cool. and I often get teased about not having the best presenting skills or pronunciation. You want to help me out? Yeah, let's uh, let's yeah. mispronounce all of these. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Sit and join us. Thank you. You're the new lass, eh? A synonym for lass is older woman, wife, girl or young woman. A wee bit older than madam usually takes on. She likes them no more than five and twenty. But I'm sure you'll do fine. What's your name, dearie? Claire. This music is just like football or, or any sport. If you're good at it, you're good at it, and it don't care what color you are, what you look like, or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? If you're good, you're good. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, you don't. And you ain't gonna make it, you know? And if you do, if you got what it takes, then you're gonna make it, you know? Slim Shady won't, obviously. I'm a failure, but 